Welcome to the third in a series of tutorials covering Snap with Finch and Hummingbird. This tutorial explores using the Hummingbird in Snap. We begin by discussing each Hummingbird block and its capabilities, followed by how you can use Snap with Hummingbird to build a simple robot program and a simple game program. So we're going to start again with our BirdBrain robot server application. We'll open it and it shows that we have a Hummingbird connected and no Finch connected. So now we can open Snap. Keep in mind that if you want to open Snap without requiring the use of an internet connection, you can check this box to open Snap locally. Um, so we'll open it. And here's the Snap interface. So immediately we can see that in motion we have three new Hummingbird blocks. The first is Hummingbird Servo, and this controls any one of the four servo ports on the Hummingbird. So uh, the default is set to port 1, we could do port 2, port 3, or port 4. And then um, this number signifies the orientation uh, of the servo. So the value here is between 0 and 180 degrees. So servos can move 180 degrees total, so you can just set this to any number between 0 and 180. The Hummingbird motor block controls one of the two DC motors on the Hummingbird. So the first number again is which uh, motor port, so either port 1 or port 2. And then the second argument is the power going to the motor. So anywhere from minus 100 for full reverse to 100 for full forward. So if I change this to 100, click on it, now my motor will spin full forward, motor on port 1. Finally there's the vibration motor, and again there are two vibration motor ports, so you can change this to port 1 or port 2. And um, with the vibration motors, we just set the speed of the motor, or how much it vibrates, its intensity. And that number uh, is anywhere from 0 to 100%, so 100 is fully on. And if we click on that, then it'll cause the vibration motor on port 2 to be fully on. So those are the um, hummingbird blocks in the motion category. In the looks category, we have two blocks. We have Hummingbird LED, so this controls one of the four um, regular LEDs or LED ports. So again, the first number is the port number. So let's say we have an LED on port 3. We want to turn it on to 50% power. Um, we click on that, and that'll cause it to turn on. So again, the number here is between 0 and 100%. 100% is fully on, 0 is fully off, and numbers in between are partially on. With the tricolor LEDs, uh, we have two ports. So the first number again is port 1 or port 2. And then uh, the tricolor LEDs have red, green, and blue uh, LED LEDs inside them. So we set the power level of each color individually. So by default, it would make your LED green, because red is 0, green is 100, blue is 0. If you change red to 100, and green to zero, now your your LED will be red, and so on. Under sound, we have one custom block uh, that's provided by the BirdBrain robot server, and this is a text-to-speech block. So if I put any tr text in here, like this is a Snap tutorial, and click on it, this is a Snap tutorial. it says this is a Snap tutorial over the computer speakers. And then finally, in sensing, we have a large number of Hummingbird sensor blocks. So first is the Hummingbird light sensor block, and this assumes that you have a light sensor put on port 1. So again, there are four sensor uh, ports on the Hummingbird, so we just change this to 1, 2, 3, or 4, um, for whichever one we have a light sensor on. And then the value it will return is anywhere from 0 to 100. So right now it's 0. Um, because I don't actually have a light sensor hooked up. If you don't have a, a light sensor hooked up and you use the light sensor block, you might get any number. So you don't generally want to do that. Um, there's two temperature blocks. They return the temperature in Celsius or Fahrenheit, assuming that you have a, a temperature sensor hooked up to the port number. 
there are two distance blocks and they return the uh, distance to an object from the di hummingbird's distance sensor so if I had a uh, if I had a distance sensor hooked up to port 1 it would tell me in centimeters how far away an object was from that distance sen sensor the range with these in centimeters is roughly 8 centimeters is the closest it gets to 60 centimeters is the furthest away. It will return values greater than 60 centimeters, but if it does that, you should assume that there's nothing there at all. With inches, same thing, just uh, divide those values by 2.5. So roughly 3 inches to roughly um, 23, 24 inches. The knob value just returns a value between 0 and 100. So 100 is you know fully turned in one direction, 0 is fully turned in another. So I have a knob right now hooked up to port 3, so it's 100 in one direction. Now I'm turning it, 76, 67, 21, 0. The sound sensor um, will return a value that is either 0 if, if nothing is heard, or um, a value indicating how loud things are. The range again is 0 to 100, so 100 is about as loud as you get with the sound sensor. And then there's a raw sensor value which again um, it just re returns a value between 0 and 100. Because the Hummingbird sensor ports are just analog voltage inputs, this corresponds roughly to a voltage level at 0 of 0 volts. At 100 the voltage level would be 5 volts and any number in between there is just a proportion so 50 would be two and a half volts for example so that's the raw sensor value block so those are all the hummingbird sensor blocks so we just discussed all of the finch or hummingbird blocks let me now also discuss some of the regular snap blocks in the interface uh, this is not to, meant to be a, a full tutorial on snap and so we're not going to cover every single block um, but I do want to give you an idea of the important ones. First of all, you should note that if you right-click on most of the blocks, there will be a Help section, which can tell you um, what the block does. So Snap is mostly about programming animations and games within this canvas area. So um, this Move 10 Steps block just moves the sprite over 10 steps. Uh, turn will turn it. You can have it point in a certain direction. You can have it go to a set of coordinates or glide there. Uh, you can change X, set the X coordinate. You can change the Y coordinate by 10 or set the Y coordinate to a value. Um, and then there are some sensors like what's the X position, the Y position, and the direction right now. In looks, you can make these sprites have, um, let's bring this back, you can make the sprites have different costumes. So if you go to the costumes tab and drag in a JPEG or PNG file, uh, the sprite will um, become that image. And if you drag in multiple ones, you can use the switch uh, block to change between the different images. You can have the sprite say hello for a couple seconds, or just say hello. You can also have a thought bubble, so very cartoonish. Um, there are ghost effects and other sort of other graphic effects. Uh, you can change the size, make it bigger or smaller. Um, in sounds, you can drag sounds into the sprite and have them play those sounds, so little wave files. Um, you can also have it play notes or beats. This is all through the computer speakers, of course. Under pen, you can put the pen down, and then when you move the sprite um, with the motion commands, it will draw. Um, you can clear that. You can change the pen color, change the pen shade, change the pen size. Under control, these are all um, structures for program control. So, for example, if I use, if I go back to the scripts tab here, and if I use a when flag is clicked, when I click the green flag, it'll do all of the blocks that I've put under here. So, if I put a move and a turn, 
then that's what it does every time I click. Uh, same thing when I press a key, like the space key, up arrow, left arrow, whatever, um, you know, it'll do whatever is under there. When I am clicked is simply, you know, when I click on this block, it'll do whatever is under there. Um, there are ways to broadcast sensors between different sprites or different pro or different parts of uh, different scripts. And so you can create a broadcaster and have a receiver. You can have multiple sprites. And you can have, you know, all of them react to the same thing. So if sprite 3 does um, point in a certain direction, sprite 2 does maybe um, go to XY, and sprite 1 does that, you know, we'll change things around when when the flag is clicked. Um, there's a wait command which just waits the program for a certain or blocks the program execution or the script ed execution for a certain number of seconds. You can use a decimal point to do less than one second. You can wait until a boolean expression, that's what this hexagonal block is, um, returns true. You can create a loop that executes forever. Whatever is in here, it'll do it forever until you hit the uh, you know, octagonal stop button. You can have a counter loop, so it'll repeat whatever is in here 10 or whatever number you want to put in here times. And again, you can have a repeat until loop, so it'll repeat whatever is in here until you hit, um, uh, until you have something return true. You can have if statements, you can have if else statements, you can report values, stop blocks, stop scripts. Under sensing, you can detect if one sprite, so for example if I'm in sprite 2, I can detect if I'm touching sprite 1 or sprite 3. You can rename your sprites. Um, you can detect if you're touching a color in case you're drawing a pen trail. Uh, this block allows you to detect if a key is pressed. Um, this block will return the distance to the sprite. So distance from sprite 2 to sprite to the original sprite is 214 pixels roughly. Uh, there's a little timer block and a timer counter. There's an HTTP get block which returns the value at, at that web address. This is actually how we communicate from between Snap and the BirdBrain robot server. And then there's turbo mode. For operators, we have plus, minus, multiply, and divide, modulo, round, square root, random numbers, less than, equal to, or greater than, and or not. So if this and this is true. Um, we can join strings together, so join hello and world into hello world. We can get to string manipulation, so letter 3 of world is r. What's the length of, you know, whatever you put in here. Um, and then this category of variables and lists is very important. You can make your own variables. So let's ma say we made a counter variable we can set the counter variable to a value. So let's say that if we press um, space, we'll set it to zero. If we press the up key, we'll increment it by one. And if we press the down key, we'll decrement it by one. So I'm pressing down a whole bunch, I press up, and if I press space it goes back to zero. Um, there's also lists, so these are analogous to arrays, so you can get item one of the list, uh, all but the first item of the list, and so on, the length of the list. And then finally, uh, you can make your own blocks. And so if I made a block in the motion, command, let's call it move and turn, 
we could have you know a block that moves the sprite turns it 15 degrees um, and so now it'll show up down here and if I click this it moves and turns my sprite uh, something that's important to note with all Finch and Hummingbird blocks, I have some Finch blocks open here. These are just custom created blocks out of other snap blocks. So if I right click on them and hit edit, you can see exactly how this block is constructed out of other snap blocks. And if there are any blocks that you feel are missing, like if you want a move Finch forward, um, you know, in a straight line, that takes only one argument. You're free to create your own block that just, you know, makes it out of the move finch block. So that's a very brief overview of the overall snap interface. Um, so now let's use this to make some finch or hummingbird programs. All right. So now that we've learned about the hummingbird blocks and the snap interface, let's use this to make a short hummingbird program. Now for this program, I'm assuming that I have a small robot hooked up to my hummingbird with two servos and two tricolor LEDs and a distance sensor. And the idea is that it's a maybe a robot dog or a robot penguin. And it's kind of sad until you um, walk in front of it and then it turns happy and waves at you. So how would we do this? First, we want to start our program with uh, a control block. So we'll start it by clicking on the space key and then we'll want to initialize it or make it look a certain way so our servos are on um, ports 1 and 2 and let's say that we have to set angles 30 and 100 for the arms or wings or whatever to be um, kind of pointed down and we want you know the our, our robot to look kind of sad, so a good way to do that is to give him blue eyes. And I'll right click on this and click duplicate to um, make a, a, a block for port 2 also, because we have two eyes. All right, now we want to wait until somebody walks in front of me, so the way to do that is with a repeat until and you can actually put nothing in this. And what we'll do is we'll use um, an operator, a less than operator, and we'll drag our hummingbird distance in centimeters block. Let's say our distance sen sensor is on port one. And we'll say repeat until this uh, sensor registers a value that's less than 40 centimeters, which means, or let's say 30 centimeters which means that somebody is at least less than a foot away from me. So we'll repeat until this happens. Uh, and we're not going to put anything in here. Now once that happens, uh, we want to wave to the person. So let's make our eyes green to show that we're happy that somebody showed up. And then we'll keep one servo, well, we'll wave with both uh, both arms, or both wings. So um, we can do a repeat. Let's wave three times. And we'll take our servo block. So this is sort of the, or let's say that 100 degrees is up for wing 1 and 30 degrees is up for wing or arm 2. And then we also want to do a wait because we want to give some time. And we'll duplicate this block and we'll change the value for servo 1 to 30 degrees which is an arm or wing down and servo 2 to 100 degrees which is an arm or also the arm or wing on port 2 down. So we'll take this code and put it in here, and it's going to repeat this three times. So it's going to wave to us three times. So um, this is a simple program that will wave to me when I walk in front of this robot. So if I hit space, it'll start running the program, 
and then as soon as that sensor value is um, is triggered it'll um, turn the eyes green and it'll wave to me three times All right so let's say that I want to save this there's actually three options for saving the program uh, the first two you can see if you try to do a save as let's call this um, you know waving dog and you can see two options here. First is browser, which means that it will save the uh, project into the browser cache, which is a good way of saving things locally um, as long as you don't regularly clear out the browser cache because if you clear the cache or delete the cache, you'll lose your projects. Um, so we'll hit save. Another way to save is to create a cloud account. So you can do that by clicking on the cloud button uh, I'm already logged in and I can do save as and now if I click on cloud it shows me all of the projects I have in the cloud and I'll save this project to the cloud also as waving dog and the nice thing about cloud storage is you can very easily go from one computer to the other computer um, to another computer finally you can save a local XML file and the way to do that is a little more complicated you'll want to do a uh, file export project and it'll open a new tab with your project data as encoded as an XML file and you have to go to save page as in your browser and then save this you know take out the crazy file name here and just rename it as maybe waving dog XML so we've saved it and now if we want to open that if we open a new window, let's say we open a new window in Snap. If we want to open this project um, with the one saved in the cache or the cloud, you know, there's just se selections for that. If you want to open an, an XML generated um, project, you will have to click on import. And then, um, you know, I think I called it waving dog and there's my project. So that's how to create a small program and how to save and load that program. So now that we've used Snap to create a small uh, robot program for Hummingbird, let's use it to make a game within Snap using some of the Hummingbird sensors and outputs as uh, to create an interesting game controller. So what we're going to do is we're going to open a new Snap window and we're going to make two sprites one is a ball and one is a paddle so I can rename this one to be paddle and this one to be ball and what I've done is I've created in in my case in Microsoft Paint a couple of images so I've made a small white ball own costumes I'm going to change the costume for the ball and for the paddle I'm going to give a basically a white bar and in the stage I'd like the stage to be black so I've created a black background for the stage so there we are we have a ball and a, pa and a paddle and a stage so for some of you this might start looking familiar um, basically a very simple ball and paddle game like pong and what we want to do is we want to be able to move the paddle back and forth using the Finch's uh, knob sensor. And we want to be able to have the ball hit the paddle and bounce off. So the, this is kind of a two-stage process. For the paddle script, what we want is something which just moves the paddle back and forth. So let's start writing that. So first of all, let's point it in so that it's straight horizontal and then when we press the flag we will let's do this just as a forever loop we'll always have the um, paddle move um, according to the to the sensor input from the hummingbird so we have our knob sensor 
and in our case it's on port 3 and we'll want to set the X position to this so let's just try that directly so one of the things that's nice about snap is you can very easily test fractions of your pro programmer project so I'm picking up the knob and I can move it but it's not quite the range that I want to be in so I want to be able to move it all the way back and forth so I'm gonna to have to scale this a little bit so I'll use some of the operators and maybe I'll try multiplying it by 2 but actually I was noticing that even at 0 it was only in the center so probably I want to make it so that the range is from a negative value to a positive value so I'll subtract 50 from the value and multiply that by 2 and then we'll see how that comes out okay so now I can move it most of the way but I'm still not quite happy with that so even while the program's running I can change this let's make this 2.5 and we're almost all the way there so let's make it 2.8 or maybe even 3 and this is probably good enough so to be a bit of a perfectionist how about 3.3 there so there's my program for the ball it's very simple just sets the X position based on the knob or for the paddle I'm sorry there's the program for the paddle so for the ball we probably want to do something a little more complicated so you know when the flag is clicked it should probably um, show up somewhere up here to start so we want to give it a um, under motion so we want to give it a uh, an initial X position XY position where the Y position is fairly high up so 150 and the X position is a random number so let's make X somewhere between minus 200 and 200 and then we'll want to make a control structure where um, oh, one other thing we want to do even though it's a ball we want to make sure that it's pointed in sort of a 45 degree uh, so so that it when you use a move command it will move sort of downward so I think the right direction there we'll try this out is like 215 so we'll point it in an initial good direction to have it go um, so in our loop we have one block that's very useful which is you know if you hit a wall if you hit an edge bounce but we also want it to bounce if it hits a paddle so we'll use an if statement there and one of the um, sprite sensors if it's touching the paddle then we want to rotate it so we want to have it turn by uh, 90 degrees let's say and then lastly we want it to move a certain number of steps to begin with so every time it goes through this loop it should move through five steps so this is probably a, a decent start um, obviously we haven't programmed in a way to lose if the ball goes past the paddle or anything like that but let's just try this it's pretty fast and it seems to mostly work although the angles are a little bit messy so let's stop that um, so one thing that we can do now is add some effects so we have a tricolor LED hooked up to the hummingbird to port 1 so let's flash it whenever the ball hits the paddle let's flash green 
So if it touches the paddle, let's have it turn on very briefly and then turn off. And let's get rid of that. We can also import sounds. So I found a little um, Pong sound online, so I'm going to import it. And whenever it touches the paddle, I'm going to have it play. And finally, I have a little vibration motor. So you can you know, give your joystick a little bit of feedback. Um, so we'll turn the vibration motor on briefly when it touches and then turn it off again at the end of the if statement. So let's try that. There you go, the beginnings of a game of Pong. Now this, this version is still very imperfect. Um, obviously there's some issues with the angles. Um, so we'll leave it up to the viewer to figure out all of the um, bugs in this game. So that's it for now. You should be ready to start writing snap programs to use Hummingbird to control robots and electronics. Thanks for watching.